And I have five questions from Richard Norton Smith for you, sir. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. And the first one is, events in the 70s and the 80s conspired to make you and Senator Dole competitors. Your 88 contest was at times rancorous. Could you describe the week between the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primary from your perspective? Well, I think Bob Dole won the Iowa caucuses. And thus I was kind of on the ropes, having Iowa made such an important positive difference for me earlier on. So it was a it was a dog eat dog time in there where both felt that they had to do well in New Hampshire. Uh, and the tensions were high. Uh, some of our own people were discouraged. Uh, but uh, overall, it, it worked out fine for me and in the long run, I think, for Bob. 1988 is mentioned not to raise what may have been unpleasant, but because of the contrast with what followed. Did you have any doubts in January 1989 concerning Senator Dole's loyalty or effectiveness in light of your past rivalries? No, because you, if you're mature at all, you know that when you're running against somebody, uh, the elbows get sharp. Uh, but I knew of his record, respected it. Uh, he proved to be a fantastic leader uh, for me, for the White House in the, in the Senate. And so I wasn't surprised at all. There's a great misunderstanding in politics. If you run against somebody, people think, well, you're going to be enemies. That's not the case at all. It would be very instructive to hear you describe the role Senator Dole played during your presidency, both generally and in the passage of specific legislation like the Americans with Disability Act, as well as the run-up to the Gulf War. Well, of course, of course, he was, I was totally dependent on Bob Dole. We did not have control of the House nor control of the Senate. But to get anything done in the Senate, uh, I, as president, had to have strong leadership uh, that would be supportive of my programs uh, in, the, in the Senate. And Bob Dole proved to be a great leader on that. He was a leader all the time on disability uh, legislation. And so when the ADA came up, that would not have, could not have been accomplished without Bob Dole. We knew where we had to compromise, but because of him, I knew what compromises would be acceptable. Uh, so on that particular piece of legislation, it was absolutely essential. On the run-up to the war, uh, Desert Storm, uh, I depended on him enormously because we had to get through the Senate a resolution that, quote, gave the president whatever means, uh, the, the authority to use whatever means are necessary, unquote, to end the aggression in Kuwait. Uh, and Bob Dole stepped right up to the plate supportive of this. We didn't have the votes to start with. We ended up getting the votes, and that's because of his leadership in the United States Senate. Uh, I, I've often thought about that, and uh, at, I'll never forget a dinner he gave for me when I got beaten by Clinton. Uh, he was still in the Senate, and it was very emotional, an emotional goodbye, uh, emotional tribute both ways, my paying respects to him and his paying respects to the president. So. Uh, I, I don't know how to say it other than absolutely essential. Can you describe the then controversial but now hailed 1990 budget agreement and the role Senator Dole may have had played in facilitating it? Well, in the budget agreement, again, he was, he was uh, essential. And he worked very carefully with our, uh, closely with our uh, people were negotiating for us, the Secretary of the Treasury, uh, the White House, Darman and others, and, and uh, hammered out an agreement that wasn't perfect from our standpoint. We had to give a little to get a lot. Uh, my problem was not with Bob Dole, but it was with Newt Gingrich, who at the last of the, last of the negotiations, having said he would support us, left, left the White House. We were all there gathered to go out and and say that we had a deal, and Bob was there at my side, uh, and Gingrich was missing in action. He left and went up and became the hero of the, a handful of right-wing people, but it was, I've never gotten over that, and I don't think Bob has either. 
And finally, if you don't mind Richard Norton Smith saying so, whatever differences of background of personal style may exist between you and Senator Dole, he always thought that they were outweighed by shared experiences, especially World War II, and essentially pragmatic conservatism that sometimes riled the true believers who would rather have an issue to campaign on than a bill or budget to sign. In your first congressional campaign in 1966, you observed, labels are for cans. The line could apply just as well to Senator Dole. And do you have any comments on this? Well, no, but I, I think Bob was idealistic in a lot of ways, but he was a pragmatist. He wanted to get things done. He didn't, didn't want to just give a speech before some uh, real conservative group and be a hero there. He wanted to accomplish things in the United States Senate for our country. Uh, and so uh, you pay a price for that. Uh, in some of the ideological corridors or, or drawing rooms in, around Washington. But on the other hand, you're more apt to get s to solve problems for the country. And, and that's the way Bob was. He was pragmatic, uh, had great conviction on a lot of issues, uh, but he knew that to, to, when you're in the minority, you have to make some compromises. And of course, some on the his critics and my critics didn't understand that. They just did not understand the word compromise. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Yes.